Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz appeared on Fox News after the Hunter Biden appearing at his own contempt hearing chaos where Republicans had a really tough time dealing with the fact that Hunter Biden did show up during this hearing where they're deciding on if they're going to hold him in contempt of Congress. Democrats just did so well in that setting and called out the ridiculousness of the Republican investigation. And Jared Moskowitz then goes on Fox News. And I'm assuming Fox News regretted bringing him on because he spoke some major truth and specifically focused on what he did in the hearing as well. And I'll remind you that clip in a little bit, which is you have these Republicans pretending now like they're very concerned with Hunter Biden in this case, not complying with their subpoena. But Republicans in the very hearing room in which this is being discussed didn't comply with congressional subpoenas in the past, specifically, very notably, in relation to the January 6th Select Committee. They said it wasn't a legitimate investigation or whatever. Their loyalty to Trump went beyond their loyalty to Congress, I guess. Um, and so they didn't comply with these congressional subpoenas. So Jared Moskowitz keeps saying, and I love it, hey, I'll vote to hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress if you all will vote to hold all of these Republicans who didn't comply with those subpoenas in contempt of Congress. It's beautiful. It's calling out the hypocrisy. And also, and then I'll play this, I promise, it's pointing out the fact that, in a sense, you showed us, Republicans, that it's acceptable, at least according to your principles, to not comply with subpoenas if one believes them to be coming from an illegitimate investigation. Now, why you would believe investigating an attempt to block the peaceful transfer of power and a violent attack on the Capitol, uh, why that investigation would be illegitimate, I don't know, but many of them said that. Well, now we think this whole Joe Biden's a crook investigation is illegitimate, and we have <laughs> good reason for believing that, and thus Hunter Biden isn't going to comply. I'll play this, then talk about that a little bit more. Um, so Hunter Biden showed up at this hearing, but he continues to defy a duly issued subpoena from the Oversight Committee to show up for a deposition. Um, what he did today is being seen by many people as a political stunt, grandstanding. How did you view it? Thanks, John. Thanks for having me. Quickly, it was a stunt, and it was a fantastic stunt. Appreciate the opportunity. Well, look, you know, Hunter Biden's going to do what him and his attorneys believe is the correct strategy for them. I think what we were trying to highlight today in the hearing is that the chairman, who sets the rules and sets the tone, invited Hunter to choose between a public hearing and a deposition and multiple statements over the last couple of months. Hunter Biden accepted that invitation, but the chairman obviously has decided that he's reneging the, the invitation, and now it only can be in the basement of a building in which we'll never see, never see the transcript. My, my other point in the hearing was, look, if we want to hold Hunter Biden contempt, what I said to my colleagues across the aisle was, I'll vote with them. I'll make it bipartisan. But we got to apply the rules equally. We've heard that Hunter Biden doesn't deserve special rules. I agree with that. But we have several of my colleagues that defied subpoenas in the last Congress. This never showed up, never tried to negotiate, just totally blew them off. And so if we're going to try to do this to Hunter, then obviously those congressmen uh, also need to be held in contempt. I, I want to apply the rule equally. I think that will restore faith mm -hmm. to the American people that this place just isn't, uh, is, isn't, a, isn't a show. So that simultaneously just a very true thing to say and a consistent principle to hold. And also, like I said in past segments, it's sort of playing the game, right? Now they want to talk about Hunter Biden defying the subpoena. And so then you all of a sudden just start obsessing over, well, these Republicans didn't uh, comply with their subpoenas. So let's make a deal. <laughs> and you know, they're never going to take you up on that deal. It's awesome. It's very uh, within Jared Moskowitz's rhetorical skill set, and I love it. It's perfect. Um, and again, it's honest and principled, because he's saying he would hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress if they'll hold their own Congress people in contempt of Congress for the exact same activity, the exact same behavior. Now, of course, I would prefer a world in which all investigations are just and thus all subpoenas are 
just and thus all people being subpoenaed comply with those subpoenas and if they don't they're held in criminal contempt and whatever accountability happens from there we are unfortunately in a situation where it makes total sense why hunter biden would say i don't want to go in a closed door deposition but he's offering up public testimony he's not doing what republican congress people did during the january 6th like committee saying i'm not even gonna be a part of this at all because i don't care that american democracy was over uh, almost overthrown it's not that it's i'll come publicly i'm just not going to let you manipulate private testimony like you've been doing uh in this very investigation perfectly reasonable on the part of hunter biden so i wish we were in a different situation but this is the one we're in and thus hunter biden's behavior makes complete sense here's more from this interview so for her, it's not about defending Hunter Biden or defending. I should note, he's responding to Nancy Mays, who did, was one of the Republicans who did vote to hold Steve Bannon in contempt of Congress. Now, obviously supporting holding Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress. So John Roberts is saying, if Mays was willing to do it with Bannon and here with Biden, what is your response? Steve Bannon, she's defending Congress and Congress's power of subpoena, which, which a lot of critics are saying, Hunter Biden is doing his best to emasculate. What do you say? I agree with Nancy Mace, and I applaud her in the previous Congress for taking that position. I'm trying to take the same position. I'm trying to do the same thing. I'm saying if we go ahead and hold Hunter Biden in contempt, right, my other colleagues should hold the three members of Congress, and I'm not naming them out of due respect. I'm not interested in attacking my colleagues, mm -hmm. but I am interested in preserving the system. And so what I need Representative Mace to do is I need her to look at her colleagues and say, join me. Join me on holding everyone who has defied a subpoena in contempt. If they do it, I will absolutely do it, and we'll make this a bipartisan effort. It's perfect. Credit to Jared Moskowitz. Now, the moment where he did name names, there in the interview, he said, I won't name names. But in uh, the hearing, he did name names, and that was this. Listen, I'll, I'll make this bipartisan. I'll vote for the Hunter contempt today. You can get my vote. You can get my vote. But I want you to show the American people that you're serious. Here is the subpoena to Representative Scott Perry, who did not comply. I'd like to enter this into the record. Here is the subpoena to Mark Meadows. I'd like to enter this into the record who did not comply. Here is the subpoena to Jim Jordan who did not comply with a lawful subpoena. I'd like to enter that into the record. Here is the subpoena to Mo Brooks who did not comply. I'd like to enter that into the record. Here is the subpoena to Mr. Biggs who did not comply. I'd like to enter that into the record. And here's the subpoena to Mr. McCarthy who did not comply. I'd like to enter that into the record. There's an amendment coming to add some of those names into the contempt order. So, of course, Republicans do have the right to hold Hunter Biden in criminal contempt of Congress. They do. They have that power. Uh, but their inconsistency, their hypocrisy is on a full display. And it's important to note that this investigation is ridiculous. So I do think that should be weighed. Same technical lawful power, but different public perceived legitimacy, at least there should be, because this is an illegitimate, ridiculous, nonsense, politically driven investigation solely aimed at hurting Joe Biden politically. That's it. They've been investigating for long enough now and have uncovered so little, nothing, that they know Joe Biden isn't the corrupt person they've made him out to be. They have to because they're the ones investigating so much and clearing Biden over and over again. And so despite that, they're charging forward with this investigation and attacking Biden every way they possibly can just to essentially help out Trump in the 2024 election. Now, while this is going on, as is so often the case, Republicans seem to be once again unhappy with their speaker of the house oh no it might be happening again here's some reporting from my touch speaker mike johnson is in trouble several members of the house are talking about ousting him already the honeymoon is over for maga mike johnson many of the very same house freedom caucus members who ousted kevin mccarthy from the speakership are already lining up to talk about the possibility that's already time for johnson to go and then if we skip forward in this article, we get to this. Several of the House Freedom Caucus members say that Johnson is lying about the numbers in the budget deal 
and that he got taken to the cleaners by Schumer. Their outrage and the, uh, those of many of their followers caused hashtag vacate the chair to trend on Twitter today. Many also took personal shots at Johnson and ruminated whether it was time for him to go. And some examples are cited in this article. Now, essentially, this once again has to do with the budget negotiations, spending, and he negotiated a budget deal with Schumer that these hardline Republicans are saying similar to the issue with Kevin McCarthy's deal making is too in line with Democratic priorities. And Schumer, God forbid, praised Mike Johnson for the negotiations that they engaged in. And thus the hardliners are saying, how dare you allow the government to function? We're going to take you down. It's the preliminary stages. So there's not a whole lot to discuss yet. But as my touch is pointing out, it seems there's a discussion, at least, about is it time again to oust Mike Johnson? And if this happens, that will be yet another humiliation and yet another reminder of the modern Republican Party's inability to actually govern even the most basic obligations of governance they struggle so much with. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Helps support the work being done. And then if you want to go to the next level, you can become a member, get extra content at lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership. That's the daily bonus show, lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership. Talk to you next time.